Okay, in this tutorial, I just wanted to share a few tips for managing audio in Final Cut Pro. And the main thing here is managing the uh, audio levels so that in this example, when we're mixing a music sound um, as a backdrop um, with some interview voice, um, we don't have any audio distortion through peaking, okay? So the way that we see if uh, they're peaking is just by playing them through here and having a look on the right-hand side. And you can see as the sound of the music gets a bit louder, we start to get some of these red dots here, which are the audio peaking out. So we need to come back and first of all fix that. So the first thing to do here is to think about which parts of the audio we want to keep at the maximum level. So over the interview, that would be the, uh, the interview speech. And then where we would want to drop down the audio levels for perhaps some of the action here. And then also coming back into the interview speech here, how we would drop down the audio levels for the, the music in the background. We're just going to deselect our clip and just come and have a look at this black bar. So this black bar here for our audio levels represents the levels adjustment. Okay, so we can increase or decrease the audio levels by pulling this down to reduce it um, or up to increase it. Okay, so this is the first step in kind of managing the level. So um, as a first instance here for the, the middle clip, we're just gonna pull this audio level down. Okay, we wanna have some element of the noise from this jump going on but actually we want to kind of drop that right back because it's not critical to the, the kind of timing and pace of this edit. Okay, the next thing we want to do is make sure that our audio levels for our interview text here and here are dropped down. Okay, so we're going to use the range tool to actually adjust part of this music track. So if we come to the middle here, we'll come into the range selection tool. Okay, this allows us to select a part of this audio and then once we've got that range selected so I'm just clicking and dragging across my green audio in the timeline here I can begin to pull that down so we should see now if we come to the left as well if we drop the audio levels down that we've reduced some of the peaking at the beginning here and we're looking across at the audio bars here and actually it looks like we've fixed all of that peaking that was happening now, one thing that might happen when you're working with audio is that you adjust the levels of one clip and then want to copy that adjustment to another clip. So I'm just going to show you how to, to do this. So if we grab the selection tool, okay, I'm just going to make a small adjustment to this audio here. Okay, just bring it down just a little. If we've got a number of clips on the timeline, as we do here with the same audio levels, then we can copy this clip. So if we go to edit and copy, and then we can select one or more clips and we can actually paste the attributes. So under edit and paste attributes, we have this option to paste, as you can see, video attributes such as effects, color transformations or scale transformations, and then audio attributes such as volume. So we can check volume here and just watch when I click paste here, what happens to the audio level here. So I'm pasting the audio level and you can see it just dropped down just a tiny bit. Okay. The other way of doing this is that if we have two clips that aren't adjacent to one another, but we know we want to adjust that audio level by the same amount, we can hold down the command key so we can select clips that are out of order. So I've got this first clip selected. I'm going to hold down command and click here. And now if I come to the audio levels here, I can adjust those two audio levels together and you can see them moving. And this could be for two clips or 10 clips or more. Um, depending on what you're planning to do on your timeline. So the copy and paste attributes is really useful, but also being able to select more than one clip on the timeline is another useful thing to be able to do. Now, one thing that may happen when you're recording your audio is that you get some problems with the audio, okay? So we can also um, select multiple clips and then in our audio tab here in the inspector on the right-hand side, and if you're not seeing the inspector, just go to window and show inspector and you'll be able to then see that. Okay, we're gonna jump into the audio analysis and this is where you, you can remove background noise or where you can actually adjust the loudness throughout a clip, okay? So if we check background noise removal, okay, this will now remove the noise and it's normally defaulted to 50%. What you might find is that anywhere between 50 and 100%, you start to get a very tinny sound to your audio. So you wanna be careful to make sure you listen carefully to how this audio adjustment is taking place and make sure that you don't get that kind of robotic sounding uh, tinny voice um, in your, your clips. Okay, 
We'll just leave this at the default 50%, but you can play around with this. Also, if you've got an electrical noise in the background, you can use the hum removal to remove any kind of electrical humming that is in the background as well. Okay. Uh, we can also change the loudness, okay, which will perform a similar function to the levels, but it actually looks at the whole clip and tries to create a uniform sound throughout the clip. Okay, so it will try and improve the, the overall levels throughout your edit. Okay, so once we've added those, you can see we're editing the two items that we selected using the command key here. We can go back and then we can play it with our clip. Now, one other thing that I often do when I'm editing something um, is when I'm using a cutaway like this, I'll have the audio mix into the, the visual. So if I double click here and expand the audio out for these two clips, I can do it for the middle clip too, then I can mix this audio through to the other clip. Now I can push this across, you can see I can now edit the audio now that I've expanded it out. But I can also come up here and grab the trim tool and pull the audio across so that I'm actually producing what's called an L cut. Okay, so this means the interview text will flow into the action shot that we have here, okay, which can be a nice effect. So we're using a cutaway there to kind of illustrate what's being talked about. So that's a few quick tips when you're working with audio in Final Cut Pro. If you have any questions about this, then please don't hesitate to send me a tweet at Ben Hassel, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.